For wind energy, bigger has long been seen as better. Enormous blades and turbines can generate electricity far more efficiently than the small ones. Or so we were told. Now, when I saw a few interesting videos last year here on YouTube about this motionless turbine, it piqued my interest. Can a wind turbine be 100% motionless? And how would that even work? Or is it yet another gimmick in the new wind inventions? What has happened over the past year with it? Make sure to let me know your thoughts after you watch this whole video down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. Happy 2024 and let's get started. Oh, and before I start, I wanna ask you for a huge favor and I'm not talking about like or subscribe button. I had so much fun reading y'all's comments on my solid state battery video catching some of my mispronunciations. So. Do me a huge favor, I am never mad at you guys leaving a comment, but it would help me so much if you actually did point out the words that I am mispronouncing, because English is not my first or even my second language. But that's again, the only way for me to learn, so keep those corrections coming, it only helps me. Now back to the video. One of the biggest drawbacks against wind turbines are obviously the blades. They're big, some even over 430 feet long, which is literally longer than a football field. They make noise and are just an eyesore, to some. Since 2000, since early 2000, wind turbines have grown in size in both height and blade length to generate more and more energy. For example, in 1990s, the normal height of a wind turbine stood at about 98 feet. In 2020, inline turbines grew to almost 300 feet tall, and the offshore ones are supposed to be close to 500 feet tall in 2035. So those wind turbines are becoming taller and taller to capture more and more energy as wind increase as altitude increase. But if bigger is better, why aren't we installing more of them, more and more and more of them? I mean, wind are already accounts for over 10% of our US power generation. Well, there's quite a few limitations, starting with transportation, cost, and installing those large turbine blades. Since those blades cannot bend, imagine being the driver with a truck and a cargo of such a length. It is extremely hard, but mostly expensive undertaking to transport them. The Department of Energy is actually looking into flexible blades. How crazy does that sound? Like, I can just imagine a wind blades just wibbling like that. But so with all those limitations, we are going to stop production of wind turbines. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so with all those limitations, wind as a power source remains in majority done by huge national or state projects. But what if we could somehow make them smaller, less obvious, and just better suited for still commercial, but more like a Walmart user? And this is exactly what an American company called Aeromine is trying to achieve. They're headquartered in Houston, Texas, and led by a wind industry veteran, they're changing the game with an innovative roof-mounted design that operates without visible moving parts. So it's not 100% motionless. Now, Aramine hopes to prove that smaller, quieter, and less conspicuous, I hope I said that right, wind power equipment can be useful too. The goal isn't to replace the wind farms, but to supplement them with smaller scale systems that are easier to maintain and can actually be installed in areas where you literally just can't put a wind farm. It just would not work. Now, those examples include applications like warehouses, office buildings, manufacturing facilities, big box retail. They also mentioned apartment complexes. So basically to sum it up, just big buildings with three phase power. <laughs> Now the company claims its motionless turbine can generate as much as 50% more energy than conventional solar panels, hear this, using 10% of the space. It is supposed to work very well in most extreme weather condition and produce power when the demand is big. Now let's take a look at how their aerodynamic design works. Their wind device, for the lack of a better word, I feel bad calling it a wind turbine because you really can't see the turbines, but their device works by capturing and amplifying wind that strikes the side of a building and accelerates as it flows over the flat roof. Now, let me quickly explain where the wind would be best or actually fastest 
and why it would be at the edge of the building. So when the wind encounters a building, it generates a positive pressure on the windward face as it's deflected. As it moves around the sides and over the roof, if it creates reduced or even negative pressure in its wake. The highest pressures are typically felt at the windward corners and edges of the roof where the negative pressure can be significantly stronger compared to the central areas of the roof. Now, how does that apply then to air mines? So as the wind passes through a pair of aerodynamic foils, it maximizes the speed. And then as it passes through the wind, it creates a vacuum at the base of the unit, which then spins an enclosed propeller propeller, thus generating power. So there is still some motion, it's just not visible to the eye of the observer. The unit looks a little boxy, somewhat like an HVAC on a commercial roof, and it stands at about 10 feet tall. Now those units would be installed on edges of flat roofs, leaving space for solar system installations to be combined with wind, possibly powering the entire building when combined. According to their website, one unit would generate an equivalent amount of power to 16 solar panels. So for those commercial systems, they expect it to consist of 20 to 40, maybe even 60 units installed in a way that phase the predominant wind direction. But where are we with this as of now? So the company installed a testing unit in a factory here in the USA in 2022. And according to middle of 2023, which is last year, it has been a great experience so far. The company is also talking to owners of multifamily housing about possibility of mounting their unit on top of apartment complexes. But so far, not much has been posted on their websites besides some news releases. I did send them a list of questions like, when will it be available? Can I buy one myself? Will it have a built-in inverter or will that have to be paired separately? What are the minimum wind speeds? And basically a lot of other questions. And they did promise that they will get back with more answers. So I am just hoping for a future video update for y'all as well. So again, make sure to subscribe. Now, Let's look a little bit about some drawbacks. So since those units are still on the testing phase, we don't really have much of technical information on them, but hopefully soon we will. I do see a few potential drawbacks of the motionless turbine, but as you know, with everything, we just can't have it all. Now here, we don't have moving parts as far as the yaw or the control system to direct the turbine towards the wind as it changes. So we have to rely on the wind rows to determine which position will work most efficiently. But even though we are limiting that potential wind, how much would we really gain if we were to add that extra mechanism to spin it around and face the wind? That's a good question. Maybe you know the answer. Now, one of the major advantages that Aeromine Design has over pretty much all the other micro wind turbines is that it has no exposed rotating blade. And with the lack of visible rotating blades comes the benefit of it basically being silent in operation. And that overcomes one of the main opposition, one of the biggest opposition raised against existing roof mounted wind turbine technologies. We talked about that in my last one video, and I'm going to make sure to link it down in the description below. Now, another positive is the fact that construction trans and transportation of them should be fairly easy and inexpensive. And with consideration of it only being installed on the edge of the roof, adding solar panels will be a perfect combination or like a non-invasive idea. Now, I've seen some other wind turbines that could act like a mount for solar panels. I believe they're called Power Nest by a company uh, from Netherlands. And I really want to look into that idea as well and talk about it, maybe produce a video. But the advantage I see to Airmine being just focused on the wind technology and does not disrupt the potential of solar idea just seems a little bit better to me than, you know, like a whole structure that's built for both. You know, I've been in contracting for over eight years now. So when I saw the power nest idea, I just saw a lot of materials and it just screamed more cost to me because you see the whole overall structure that supports the panels. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Forget I said anything. I can't talk too much about it yet because I haven't done my full research. So just be on the lookout for that video coming soon. But this is exactly why I am more fond of the Aramine idea, just because it's two separate systems that just don't disrupt one another. Now, in conclusion, 
I can see how malls, like big box stores, like Walmart, Costco buildings would be a great customer paired with solar panels for those wind turbines. I can also see how the noise should really not be a big concern with those with those buildings because they're usually located near highways or in urban areas and it's pretty noisy there already. But what do you guys think? Like, is this new? Is this a new promising technology or do you think it's just going nowhere like the Liam F1? I'm really hoping it's the first. We need some sort of wind solution, not just my hot air for the smaller applications. What do you guys think? Make sure to let me know down in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. My 2024 goal is to get 50, get to 50,000 subscribers by 4th of July so we can celebrate. See you in my next one. Bye.